This personal rig update is gonna be a little different. For starters, I'm filming right now, obviously, and yet my personal rig is about 20 minutes away by car at my house on my desk. So how can we update it? Well, good question. We're going to be doing something that we've never done before. We will be building a case from scratch. So come along with us for the ride of your life as Taryn and I collaborate to design the new case that we'll be sending to Protocase for fabrication. Oh, and if custom cases don't appeal to you, then you can drop a like on this video if you want to see another video that I'm planning where I'll be building a sick rig with no case at all. Ha! That's going to be awesome too. The Master Case 5 by Cooler Master gives you the freedom to truly make your mid-tower PC case your own with a variety of modular parts and accessories. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. So our adventure started in the server room. Not because we couldn't look up the dimensions of a standard rack mount chassis on the internet. Oh yeah, for those of you who missed part one, we'll be building my personal rig in a rack mount case this time. But because to control the scope of the project, I wanted to pick out a size that I figured I could move around fairly easily, then work backwards to see what kind of hardware I could fit inside versus just kind of coming up with the dream hardware spec list and then ending up up with the Corsair 900D, like what evidently happened to George. So then it was time to take those measurements to our 3D modeling program of choice, SketchUp. And yes, yes, I know, SketchUp is not the best modeling software on the face of the earth, but you know what? It's what Taryn knows how to use, and this is a video about designing a case, not a video about learning a brand new 3D modeling software or whatever. So we built out the outer walls, making sure that our case would conform to the standard width of a rack-mounted case and to my length target to keep the overall size reasonable. We're going with a 4U case, so that takes care of the height. That's four standard rack-mount height units tall, because while a 3U would accommodate full height expansion cards like graphics cards, it would make using all 120 millimeter fans in the design untenable. And while the acoustics of the system technically don't really matter with this project, because I'll be moving the finished system outside of my office into a closet, I'd still prefer to use them, even if only so that I can use the custom NFF 12 fans that we have Noctua making in our LTT color scheme. So there were a couple noteworthy things that were really cool about this project for us. The first was that we discovered just how deep the library of PC component models is in the online database. And while some of them are not to scale for some reason, um, others are both shockingly accurate and perfectly to scale, allowing a custom rig maker to really test out his or her design before doing any of the really expensive prototyping steps. It's really great for working on PC projects like this. I also discovered why most case designers probably learn to 3D model themselves. I swear, Taryn spent about a billion years fixing the coherency of the model or some stupid crap when I must have told him a dozen times, Taryn, we're just submitting this to someone else to fix up and ultimately manufacture. They're gonna deal with the picky details. But he was like, no, it's important, so fine. Speaking of guidance, I guess this is a good opportunity to show you guys why I did need Terran to help me. So this is the mock-up that I originally submitted to Protocase when I was pitching them the concept of an enthusiast-grade water-cooled 4U case. They were like, Hmm, okay, yes, I see where you're going with this, but could we get something a little more <clears throat> uh, detailed? <laughs> but, but, but for all its faults, that uh, original mock-up did help us through the creation of the proper 3D model. So we determined after some fooling around with different fan models that we'd need to use 120 millimeter fans in the front because while 140 millimeter fans would fit, there wouldn't be enough clearance for the tanks at the ends of the radiator if we wanted the middle fan centered in the front of the case, something my OCD 
simply required to happen. And then using the tried and true method of folding it out of paper, then handing it to someone else to 3D model, I showed Taryn how I wanted the second bank of fans and second radiator to mount behind the first one. Uh, between these two and a potential final single 120 millimeter, that gives me now a total of seven 120 millimeter radiator spots. Uh, plenty of cooling for the hardware I'll be putting inside. The next stage was figuring out how the rest of our components were going to fit in the space that we had. Now the original plan, yes I know it's terrible, had a dual tube reservoir setup with two pumps, one for each, which is more for redundancy in the event of a pump failure than anything else. After inserting a motherboard and power supply, we realized that in order to have our hard pipe tubing setup look good, I mean, yes, we could have made it work the original way, but to make it look good, we had to scale it back to a single pump and reservoir. Not what I was aiming for, but a first world problem for sure, so no real, no big deal. With all that in place, all that was really left was the little picky detail work, which ended up actually taking about as long as the test fitting. Uh, spacing of the motherboard and power supply had to be tweaked to ensure that a dual slot card could be installed in the bottom PCI slot on a seven slot motherboard to give the system more expandability. Uh, Terran remodeled our D5 pump to have the same EK top that I'll be using in the build, then adjusted the mounting foam for the pump to ensure that it would line up perfectly with the outlet on the reservoir, giving our hardline tubing a really clean look there. The cable management holes were created in the radiator mounting plate for the front rad and fans. Uh, we added SSD mounting on the side of the chassis because even though I'll be using a 1.2 terabyte 750 series PCI Express SSD from Intel um, and a NAS for my main storage, I mean, who knows, someone else may want to replicate this project but use a normal SSD, so we might as well build in that functionality. And then finally, while this was basically eyeballed, cable management space was left to run the 8-pin and 24-pin motherboard connectors and PCI Express power cleanly along the bottom of the chassis next to the motherboard. And this is basically it, what you're looking at here. My next case, which will be hidden away in my closet where I actually don't have to look at it, but it will be able to be looked at. It'll look pretty good still, and it'll deliver the same performance and functionality that it would even if it was right next to me. So now it's time to submit this puppy to Protocase along with technical drawings of key components like radiators, um, who is then going to mock it up and hopefully, if all goes according to plan, fold up some steel, screw it together, powder coat that sucker, and send it back to me when you guys will get the next update. I can't hardly wait. And on that subject, Squarespace. Yes, Squarespace, the space that is square or rectangular or another sort of rectangular. Yes, Squarespace is the online website building tool that lets you build a website that looks functional. Well, not just looks functional, is functional and looks beautiful on any device, whether it's your phone or your laptop or your desktop PC. They offer 24 seven tech support via live chat and email and plans start at only $8 a month with the hosting included, not to mention that you get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for a year. They've got a whack ton of different templates that all look and function well, look great and function well. You can't look well. You could look well, like healthy, you know. Your website has a healthy glow to it and whether you want to build a store or a blog or a, uh, uh, you know, let's say a, a portfolio if you're an artist or something like that, Squarespace lets you get started right away. In fact, you can sign up for a trial today with no credit card required and start building your website right now. And then when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace, because it really is easy to use, you use offer code Linus to save 10% off your first purchase. So head over to squarespace.com right now. Thanks for watching this latest personal rig update, guys. If the video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, instructions up there, buying a cool t-shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click that little button in the top again to check out our channel super fun video, where we undergo a pinball challenge to see who has to eat chocolate-covered bugs. Much hilarity ensues.